This episode is brought to you by the Weather Channel app. Did you know the app can help you forecast more than just the weather? With allergy tracking and flu risk mapping. So you know when to stay inside and load up on podcasts. As well as air quality and UV indexing. So you know when to get outside, load up on sunscreen and podcast. Forecast more of what you love with the Weather Channel app. Apple Gift Card is a practical gift that unlocks a world of entertainment and fun. You can send it via email or give a physical card to your loved ones. Your friends and family can spend it on their favorite Apple services, including Apple subscriptions. Apple Gift Card can be used to buy all things Apple. Products, accessories, apps, games, movies, TV shows, iCloud Plus, and more. Visit apple.com for details and to send Apple Gift Cards to your friends and family this holiday season. Holistic Voice presents the Food Heals podcast with your hosts, Alison Melody and Susie Hardy. Join the Food Heals nation and learn the secrets to go from feeling unwell to healing yourself. Warning, side effects of this podcast may include increased health and vitality, thoughts of living longer, an increase in sexual activity, feelings of joy, cravings for kale and quinoa, and a spike in Tinder matches. In rare cases, people have experienced a strong desire to put down the Ben & Jerry's, get off the couch, and take a walk outside. If you experience any of these symptoms, tell your Facebook friends immediately. All right, welcome Food Heals Nation. Thanks so much for joining me. I'm Allison Melody. Have you ever wondered how you could eat plant-based decadent meals and stay on a budget? Or maybe you want to know how to travel in a van across the United States while eating healthy? My guest today has the answers. Kathy Davis is a plant-based lifestyle and mindset coach. She is the CEO of Veg Inspired and the author of three amazing cookbooks, the 30-Minute Whole Food Plant-Based Cookbook, the Super Easy Plant-Based Cookbook, and the Budget Friendly Plant-Based Diet Cookbook. I know. Write them down. Rewind. Write them down. (laughs) Kathy is on a mission to empower and inspire people to eat more plants, sounds familiar, and leverage the power of food to meet their personal and professional goals. Kathy has been eating and creating vegan meals for more than eight years. Over the past two and a half years, she has shifted her daily habits to follow a whole food plant-based lifestyle, and her results have been amazing. Let me tell you, 40 pound weight loss, renewed energy, and a newfound sense of joy and a healthier mind and body. So if you want to follow in Kathy's footsteps and learn how to be veg inspired, this episode is for you. But first, Food Heals Nation, who likes free stuff? I know I do. And our friends at Organifi have some free stuff for us. Do you want to hear about it? All right. So you know I love Organifi. It's a line of organic superfood blends that offer plant-based nutrition with super high quality ingredients. You know that I love the glow. You know I'm obsessed with the harmony. And you know that I fall asleep to the gold. Now, I also take the greens and the reds and the vitamins all throughout the day. So just know that I am a super fan. And if you're a super fan too, or if you're ready to try Organifi, you're like, Ali, I've heard you talk about this so much. I don't know where to start. I don't know what to try. Well, let me tell you that summer is here and it's time to get your glow on. If you order glow between May 13th and May 25th, you're going to get a free pure 14 count travel packs. Okay. So you're going to get 20% off, of course, because you have my discount code, Food Heals. So let me remind you about Glow, one of my favorites, which tastes like strawberry lemonade. They say raspberry lemonade. You tell me what you think, but it's just a sweet berry lemonade. So what is Organifi Glow? It's your plant-based collagen. Everyone says, Ali, uh, where do you get your collagen? And I say, y'all know that I cannot purchase collagen ethically uh, because it goes against my moral standards. So instead, I have to find a vegan collagen. This is it, y'all. This is it. Glow was created because your best complexion starts on the inside. We know beauty is inside out. So this refreshing blend from Organifi supports your body's innate collagen production and promotes brighter, more radiant skin. It boosts hydration and it nourishes your skin with 13 clinically studied superfoods. So this is the way to boost, promote, and support collagen production without using a collagen animal-based product. 
Our skin is our largest organ. We know that it's absorbing all the ingredients and chemicals in our cosmetics and our lotions. And so as much as we try to be, you know, chemical free and get rid of ingredients that we don't want, it's almost impossible not to absorb things through your skin. But the fewer synthetic products that you use on your skin, the fewer toxins you'll pull into your system, right? And so what we want to do is we want to nourish our skin from the inside with products like Glow so that we don't need as many topical products. We don't feel like we need to put all this cover up and all this makeup on all of the time. I do minimal makeup, I don't know about you, and then I take Glow every day because I know that's gonna heal my skin from the inside out. It's gonna keep me hydrated, it's gonna improve my skin's elasticity, it balances oil production, it actually stimulates the lymphatic system to reduce puffiness and remove toxins. So it's got this aloe vera and the tremella mushroom. Room. And those are in Organifi Glow that are specifically designed to support hydration and promote healthier skin. We know plant-based collagen is hard to find and most collagen is animal-based. It's not for me. It's probably not for you. So this is what I do instead. Collagen is essential for healthy skin, hair, and nails and a balanced digestive system. That's why I love Organifi Glow because it's got Bamboo collagen, baby. It's one of the only sources of safe, bioavailable plant-based collagen that exists. So check it out and you'll get your freebie May 13th to May 25th. Go to Organifi.com slash Food Heals. Use the coupon code Food Heals. You're going to save your usual 20% no matter what. O-R-G-A-N-I-F-I dot com slash Food Heals. Coupon code Food Heals for 20% off. And when you order Glow, you're going to get 14 free travel packs of their pure, which is great for energy and digestion. And it tastes great. It's like an easy, light, light lemonade. Um, so check those out, get your freebies, Organifi.com slash food heals. The food heals podcast starts now. Food Heals Nation, please welcome Kathy Davis to the show. Kathy, it's so great to have you. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to be here. Um, I'm excited to have you. As we talked about a few minutes ago, we are Instagram friends following each other for inspiration for the plant-based lifestyle, really, um, because we're both vegan. And so you have multiple cookbooks. You've got a beautiful Instagram. Your mission is to empower people to eat more plants. That is my mission as well. So tell us a little bit about who you are and what you do and what inspired Veg Inspired. Absolutely. So again, my name is Kathy Davis. I'm a plant-based lifestyle coach and three-time cookbook author. And I founded both Veg Inspired and now the Eat More Plants Academy. And Mm -hmm. what I do is I really make plant-based eating accessible. You know, I provide tips, tricks, recipes, foods, and the mindset necessary to help inspire and empower people to eat more plants. I love that. And I love that you have the budget-friendly plant-based diet cookbook because One of the number one things that I hear from people not in this world, whether it's friends or I'm visiting someone, is I I couldn't do it because it's too expensive. And yes, can it be expensive to be healthy? Of course. Can it also be absolutely affordable and even cheap? Yes. But like anything, you have to learn the tips, tricks, and tools to do that. So I'll definitely ask you for some budget-friendly plant-based tips. But first, uh, Kathy, can you just take us back and tell us a little bit about how you got here? What what inspired you to go vegan and really what was the impetus to to build this business? I would love to. So my plant-based journey started with some resistance, I'll say. My husband had the idea of exploring plant-based eating, going plant-based, and I was the opposite. (laughs) I was like, nope, not giving up burgers, not giving up blue cheese, not giving up chicken wings. I had those hangups like a lot Mm -hmm. of us. A lot of people introduced to plant-based eating, we we have those hangups. So if you're listening and that might be you, it's okay. You you totally. can make it work. And it was about an 8-month journey of exploring recipes using familiar foods. Mm. It wasn't the start of let's try tofu, let's try tempeh, let's try nutritional yeast. It was more let's make sauces from cashews and let's eat potato tacos and foods that I I knew the ingredients. I knew what it was. And the more I ate those, the more 
open to the op- option of becoming plant-based. And then once you know, you might be able to do it. For me, I started looking into animal egg and that was all I needed to see was, you know, the treatment of animals and just the unne- unnecessary use of animals. And right. the decision to go vegan really happened overnight. But what I found was in the beginning, it really seemed complicated. And I wanted to start a platform that made plant-based eating accessible. And so Veg Inspired was born in February of 2015. I went fully vegan in June of 2014. And then just two and a half years ago, I really cleaned up the way that I eat to follow a more whole food plant-based approach. Mm -hmm. And the results have been tremendous. Weight loss, energy, just an overall sense of joy and wellness. And so the further down this journey I went, the more exploration of the different stages or phases or levels, if you will, whatever, whatever way you want to describe it, but the exploration of different variations of vegan and plant-based living gave me the ability to be able to work with people at any level. You want to go vegan? I can help you. You're vegan and you want to clean up your diet? I can help you do that. You're plant-based and you want to eat more whole food plant-based? Awesome. You're vegan. You get a diabetes diagnosis. You want to follow a mastering diabetes plan? I'm here for you. So I've really kind of eaten on all ends of the spectrum. And with that experience, it, it provides me the tools and techniques necessary to help other people wherever they are in this journey. Yeah, I love what you do because I think one of the biggest problems that I see in this world is at some point, you know, what we do is eat whole foods from the ground as plant-based people. Um, But at some point, being healthy and being holistic and eating whole foods became elitist. It became inaccessible and unaffordable. And so what you do is very, very important. So thank you for that. I would love to hear your thoughts on Do you think the pendulum is swinging back to a place where this can become affordable and accessible as it always was in the past before it became trendy, before it became a rich people thing, before um, Goop and Gwyneth Paltrow stepped in and said, here's all the beautiful things you can do, but they happen to be expensive? I do think the pendulum is swinging back because I think people are becoming aware of Mm -hmm. the detriment to their health of some of the expensive plant-based processed ingredients. Mm -hmm. And I say that with love. I really relied pretty heavily on those plant-based alternatives in the beginning because I didn't know what to eat. But when that habit got, I'm not going to say out of control, but when the habit became multiple times a day of these highly processed, highly, you know, unclose to nature, right? Super refined. When that habit started to take over, I found myself was some of the same types of illnesses, right? The same types of symptoms, the, 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 you know, pre-diabetes symptoms from eating a plant-based diet that was really high in fat, really high in these processed foods. And I think the, the more education we have as consumers about the health benefits of unprocessed foods those foods that are less expensive at the grocery store, your beans, your brown rice, your potatoes, um, the, the local veggies that you can either grow in your backyard or buy from, a, from a, a neighbor who's growing them. As we come back to those roots and the excitement of having a garden and, and really taking that time and slowing it down a little bit, the food's going to become essentially more local and perhaps less expensive, less transportation, less processing, less people having to touch it before it gets to, gets to us. Yeah, I really agree with that. And I got excited at the beginning because I feel the same way. Like I am so grateful that all of these plant-based alternatives now exist. However, just like anything else, everything in moderation and the more plants I put on my plate versus uh, substitutions, the better I'm going to feel, the better I'm going to look and the more animals I'm going to help. And so for me, like you, I went plant-based for my health first, realized I could do it. Then when I realized the, you know, impact on the, the environmental impact and Uh, the treatment of the animals, I knew I could never go back. And so I'm so grateful for all of these plant-based options uh, that for existing uh, because they are helping the earth, 
But when it comes to my health, I still need to be as from the ground to the table, from the farm to the table in terms of vegetables um, and whole foods as possible. So I think we're on the same page and I just appreciate this conversation because I know it's a journey. Um, I certainly got on the uh, plant-based junk food train and I still treat myself to things all of the time when a new plant-powered ice cream or cheese comes out. I'm I'm number one to try it, but I can't have it every single day. And I think that's part of the journey of um, not only affordability, but also keeping our health in check because it's like, well, this is why we started doing this. Exactly. It's those daily habits, right? It's not about what you do once in a while. It's about what you do day in and day out. And when day in and day out, it's processed vegan foods from the microwave vegan cheeses, vegan coffees. Next thing you know, you're eating 5,000 calories of processed vegan foods and none of them are, there's no broccoli in sight. And it's those daily habits that it could have been the same thing if you were eating animals, right? It's right. just that excess. And so it's, it's really about taking a step back and looking at, I love how you said it, like how many plants you're getting on your plate, like really making sure that you're getting the food to table, the farm to table foods and not the the foods in a box all the time. Yes. Um, so I'm totally with you. And it's like, I've certainly, my, uh, my own health has swung up and down throughout the years of being on this journey and I've lost weight as you have. And then I've kind of gained it back sometimes. And I'm like, all right, what am I doing differently? Having too much processed food or having too much indulging in the vegan ice cream or whatever, you know, the latest vegan dessert is because there are so many good vegan desserts. We can talk about that. Um, but um, what was it like for you? You know, your amazing results of going plant based was losing not just losing weight, but losing 40 pounds. And that's quite a transformation. And I would love to hear about like, how did you feel different and move different in your body? And then did it start to fluctuate and come back if you were eating more processed foods? Like, tell me about that journey. Cause I think mo most of us have a goal to maintain our healthy weight, but finding that baseline can be difficult. Um, and also not losing too much weight that we're then stuck in a, um, you know, a, a thing where we want to stay thin and that's our goal rather than health. So I'd love to hear a little bit more about the weight loss journey and how that changed the way you felt and moved through the world. Absolutely. So when I stepped on that scale that day, two and a half years ago and realized it was at my highest weight ever, it wasn't a secret. Like I can't mm -hmm. claim that I didn't know I didn't feel good. It was more of what's, I guess, like what was my priority? And at the time, ease, whatever was convenient, take out, processed food, whatever it was, seemed to be the priority until I really took that step back and said, no, I want to be healthy. I mean, here we are traveling the United States in an RV, which we haven't even really touched upon. We we're going to visit all these national parks and I'm winded walking around the flea market. Like I had right. to take control over how I was feeling. And what I found early on was a mindset shift. And that really was the game changer this time around. Um, I, my husband and I decided that we were going to clean up the way that we eat. We were going to focus on whole plant foods that were mostly unprocessed. And I remember saying to him, I remember we were in the truck driving to the store and I said, you know, this is fine that we're going to do this, but we're going to Key West next week. Like I, I don't know that we're going to be able to stick with it. And he said, it's not about perfection. It's mm, about yeah. intention. He's like, you can have the vegan key lime cheesecake in Key West, but what's your intention? Do you need it every day? Or would you be satisfied with it one time while we're there? Mm -hmm. And that really started to get me thinking about long term. Long term, this was a lifestyle. It was about creating a healthy lifestyle where I was day in and day out eating mostly whole plant foods that were unprocessed. And that was two and a half years ago. I lost the first 35 pounds I lost in the first six months. That was my first milestone. That was the first thing I was shooting for. And mm -hmm. at that point, that was when I was requested to write the first cookbook, the 30 minute cookbook. And because that cookbook uses a lot more nuts and a lot more avocados, the, my weights plateaued slightly. And okay. then I went right into the second cookbook, also using nuts and avocados and seeds, went right into the third cookbook, which was the budget friendly. And then since then, I've said, okay, now my next milestone is 50. 
And it's exciting. At the time of recording, I'm actually approaching 50 pounds lost, which congratulations. Thank you. Is incredible. It feels good. I have I mean, when I say I have more energy, I I just invite the I invite the listeners to go back and watch one of my YouTube videos from November and then watch mm-hmm. one of the videos from now. Like you can physically see the energy just exude out of me now compared to that version of me two and a half years ago who was tired, really had to pull myself off the couch to to cook or, or write recipes or even test recipes. And then especially to film the YouTube videos. And then once I filmed the videos, then I had to schedule in time to edit them because I was just so tired. It was just this lethargic, just sick way of living. I mean, it was so, I was right. just eating so much processed foods. And the journey to weight loss isn't easy, but it's so worth it. And when you start to shift your mindset towards creating a life where you eat foods that fuel and nourish your body as the daily habits, it doesn't matter if you grab a vegan pizza or a vegan cheesecake or vegan cupcake or chocolate cake and a glass of wine. Like those once in a while things don't really matter because you pivot right back the next day to those foods that align with your goals. And that's really been my method. And that's what I teach people in my academy. Beautiful. Okay. So tell me about the academy. And then I would love some, like, I know that um, most plant-based people have so many answers for this, um, but there's this myth out there for people that don't know us very well or spend time with us that like, oh, you just eat salads and, you know, rabbit food. So I would love to bust that myth. What are some of your go-to meals on a daily basis that are rich and delicious and full of plants and make you so excited to eat? Cause like, I'm excited to eat. People think this is a diet of restriction. This is a diet of abundance. Tell me what you think about that. Absolutely. I 100% it's a, a, I agree that it's a diet of abundance. I eat more variety in foods now than I ever did the first, you know, three decades of my life before going vegan. And, right. you know, one of the big things that I learned with, with plant-based is there's so many more options than you think. But we were so programmed or we get stuck in that low variety with the the standard American diet that we eat that we don't think about the expansion and the abundance, as you said. I love that word with a plant based diet. And so some of my favorites, that's what you asked for. So I'm a taco fanatic. Pretty much mm. if you roll it up in a corn tortilla, I'm here for it. Um, okay. <laughs> I love to fill my I, – I could literally eat a different type of taco every day. I love to fill tacos with beans that have been simmered in taco seasonings, potatoes that have been simmered in taco seasonings. Um, I have a great recipe for chickpea El Pastor, which we could probably put in the show notes if you remind me. It's on veginspired.com, but it's chickpeas, onions, pineapple that you roast on a sheet pan. So it's one of those super easy meals. It's from the super easy cookbook. And then you serve that with a pineapple cilantro onion salsa. Like, Keep it simple, (laughs) but keep it flavorful and really level it up. So I love tacos. I think they're easy. They come together easily and they're familiar, right? Mm -hmm. People aren't like, oh, I've never had a taco. Yeah, yeah. You can throw anything in taco with your favorite taco toppings and it's plant-based. You can do veggies, you can do lentils, you can do quinoa. I mean, it's just the options are endless. So tacos are a favorite. And then honestly, I love bowls like rice or quinoa or uh, potatoes on the bottom of a bowl loaded with veggies. Maybe some are raw, maybe some are cooked, roasted, and then a really yummy sauce. I always go towards a tahini sauce, but peanut sauces, uh, teriyaki, a nice clean barbecue sauce. Like I really just love a big bowl of plant foods smothered in a tasty sauce. Yum. Me too. And tahini makes the best like Um, salad dressings or bowl dressings. I can mix tahini with anything with no recipe. I'll just be like, all right, let me throw some liquid aminos in there. Let me throw some tomato in there. Let me throw some lime in there. Let me throw some apple cider vinegar in there. I just gave you a recipe. Like that is how easy it is to make amazing sauces with tahini. That is one of my favorite, most versatile plant-based foods, 100%. Me too. I love it. And for those of you listening, it's also good in baking and it can be a substitute for um, 
butter or oil in cookies. Yes. Yum. Okay. I'm so excited. I'm getting hungry. <laughs> Can you tell? Yes. I love it. Okay. Any more meals that you want to share or should we move to tips? Uh, so one of the, the other thing that I always get asked is breakfast and I'm pretty simple when it comes to breakfast. I basically eat the same thing every day. It's just oats, plant milk, some ground flax, uh, frozen berries. I let it thaw, let them thaw. I let put it, mix it all together and let the berries thaw, drizzle on some maple syrup. And it's my easy veg inspired oat bowl. But I also like to do cooked quinoa with cinnamon, vanilla, apples, like really starting to use foods a little bit more unique, maybe sweet potato with some apple, maybe a maple tahini sauce. So really looking at ways that you can Again, familiar foods, using them at different times of the day. And then a couple of other takeaways. Snacks are a big question that I always get as well. My favorite snacks are hummus and veggies. Seems like an easy one. Frozen red grapes. Now, if you have a sweet tooth and you're always looking for something sweet, like a popsicle or ice cream, freeze some red grapes because they're great. You can just reach in the fridge and grab a handful and then eat them. And they're like candy, but they're also like a sweet treat, especially as we get closer to summer. Mm, that's a good one. I put frozen red grapes in a smoothie with almond butter and I kind of call it my peanut butter and jelly. And it is mm. so good. That does sound good. Yeah. So easy too. And then I put all my powders in there and it makes it really healthy and full of superfoods. So easy to make things healthy these days. Yes. Amazing. Okay. So I know you have lots of tips for us. Um, so I want to ask you about some budget friendly tips, some travel tips and, um, plant-based eating for high achievers or busy professionals. So we can start wherever you're feeling the most passionate, but those are the three that I know that, um, you're good at that I wanted to cover. Awesome. So let's start with budget friendly tips. Now I always tell people, kind of can't have it both ways. You can't save money and save time, right? Because when a, as a food is processed, it means more hands touch it. So budget friendly would be the broccoli that you have to cut and prepare. Not budget friendly might be the broccoli that's already prepped into little florets that you just dump in a pan and cook. So I always tell people like, you really need to decide where your priorities last. Are you still trading time for money? And if you are trading time for money, which one is more important to you? Mm -hmm. Because it goes the same way with beans. Like you could buy dried beans for really, really inexpensive price and cook them yourself. But if you don't have the time to do that, where does it fall off? You know, where do you fall off? Where do you lean into that priority? So a couple of really specific tips though, for budget friendly. One, get the store card. Yes. <laughs> I know it's like back in the day when you people were couponing and all of that. But at, because we travel, we visit different grocery stores all the time. We can't really predict food costs um, because we're all over the country. But when we get the mm -hmm. store card, sometimes the stores even have diesel or gas savings. So we yeah. could save 20 bucks in the grocery store and then go out and fill up our tank and save another 20 bucks at the pump. That's $40 in savings. Like that's a big deal. Right. Right. And then when you're looking at um, another tip is look at how you plan your meals so that you can piggyback recipes. So let's say you do have a taco and you like to put lettuce, tomato, uh, maybe you use onion in the taco filling and maybe like a cashew cream. Maybe the next day you could do a veggie burger that you're going to top with onion, lettuce, tomato, and the cashew cream is like a mayonnaise. So look at ways that you can kind of piggyback your ingredients so that you're not buying 17 different vegetables, you're buying five, and then you're using right. them across three or four days. The other tip is to set aside a little bit more time for food preparation so that you can buy things that weren't touched by multiple hands, mm -hmm. right? So that broccoli that you have to wash and cut and prep is going to be less expensive than the broccoli that's already been prepped and cut for you. That watermelon that's in, the, that's the whole watermelon is going to be, you know, less expensive per water, per, per piece than the watermelon that's already been cut. And then the right. other tip that I really like is, you know, buy in bulk, when it makes sense. So if you're not going to eat 
five pounds of bananas and you don't have a way to freeze them, don't buy that many because throwing out food is wasting money as well. So really be strategic on where you use bulk and where you don't, because just, just because you buy seven, you know, seven cups of, or one of those big containers of spinach, if you throw away half of it, if you pay $7.99 for it, but you could have bought half the amount for $4.99, you, you wasted three bucks, right? So really thinking about that strategically and, and knowing where your food, where your food money's going. Yeah, I can relate to this one so much. And I think you can too, since you are traveling in the RV. I went from having two fridges and two kitchens because I had my house and then I had a guest house in the yard where I could buy in bulk and, you know, store things for long periods of time to living almost out of my car because I hit the road and became a digital nomad um, during the pandemic for basically a year before I put down roots in Nashville. And so it really was a different living experience going from having plenty of storage space to, I don't know what kind of Airbnb I'm going to be in next week. Right. And so Um, not buying in bulk and figuring out how to make that affordable, I pretty much did exactly what you said. I had to shift my mindset going, well, it's cheaper to buy it this way, but this food is going to go to waste. And so it is actually going to save me money and nourish me to buy it this way, where before I had convinced myself it was the opposite. So it really is being present about where you are in your life and what you have space for. So I certainly had to make that shift myself. I'm sure you did as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's a perfect segue into travel tips, right? Because while you were traveling as a digital nomad, your access to different grocery stores changes, your access to your spice cupboard changed, right? Like you had to be very strategic on flavorings and and seasonings and, and, you know, what you were buying. And, you know, for us, when we travel, we eat mostly in the RV because we do eat whole food plant-based. So it's very, we, we buy with a lot of intention on those whole plant foods. I meal plan very, very specifically uh, with foods that I know we can find at any grocery store because, you know, the beauty of traveling the country is that we can be anywhere. And a lot of times that's outside of a national park. And those grocery stores are smaller. You know, there right. I may not have access to whole foods. And so this this way of eating is very doable even if you don't have access to those big grocery stores because you're eating very simply, right? Potatoes, vegetables, beans, rice, like there's a lot of fruit. There's a lot of options that you can get in these smaller grocery stores that will nourish your body. And then strategically, you might bring your favorites. So we talked about tahini. We always keep the tahini. We have one favorite tahini. We always keep it with us. We always are stocked on it. We buy it when we see it. It's, you know, it's not something we go without. Same thing with miso and same thing with nutritional yeast. But everything else we can kind of find where we travel. And because we don't eat a lot of the processed foods, it we are afforded with the comfort of knowing we can whip up a cashew, a cashew dressing or a cashew sauce or a cashew cheese when we want to. And that's, you know, knowing that and having those recipes makes it very easy to travel, you know, in, in eat out of the house. And then when we're hitting those vegan restaurants, because again, I'm not perfect. I'm intentional. It's really about planning ahead. Like, what do I want at this restaurant? What is my intention for going to this specific restaurant? How am I going to navigate eat everything in sight? I'm just kidding. To order all the things, right? That's what we used yes. to do. Right. Now we're a little bit more intentional. (laughs) I I have yet to get to that point. I go to the vegan restaurant in a town that I've never been to. And I'm like, I need a little bit of this, a little bit of that. I need this appetizer. I need the soup. I need the salad. I need the the plant-based burger. I need the plant-based lasagna. You know, I'm just like, I need it all. I have to try it all. And the dessert. Um, Don't forget you need the dessert. I forgot the dessert. And I was just at one avocado margarita. Had to have that, you Uh, know. Yeah, that sounds amazing. Right. So um, I am working on that with myself, but I hear what you're saying. Planning ahead is key to not (laughs) overstuffing yourself and uh, overspending on out your wallet. Which I guess is a good segue into busy people, right? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So we've touched upon my lifestyle, right? I travel the United States full time in an RV by choice. We sold our house in Pittsburgh three and a half years ago. We hit the road with the goal to see all the states and visit all the national parks. And 
you know, people will often say, oh, it's like you're on vacation. And I'm always like, it is like I'm on vacation. Do you know what it's like to plan a vacation? How many hours do you think you spend planning a va vacation? Now multiply mm -hmm. that by 52. Right, people will be right. like, are you really busy? And I'm like, immensely busy. I run a coaching business. I run a, I run the, the coaching arm of my business. I run my business. I plan my travels. I, uh, you know, I'm a wife. I'm a cat mom. I love to hike. I love to bike. I'm very busy. And that's one of the reasons why I think it's important to meal plan. And so for my busy high achievers, those people who want to skip breakfast and work through lunch, it's a hard pill to swallow, but you're going to have more energy if you actually eat the food. Food Heals Nation, I know that you like listening to podcasts because you're listening to Food Heals. Did you know that friend of the show, Katie Kremitzos has one of the most amazing podcasts, actually podcast networks out there that exist today. So let me tell you about her first show, which is Meditation for Women, which you can look up right now and you'll get an incredible plethora of guided meditations at your fingertips with Katie's beautiful voice guiding you to do amazing things. You can listen when you want to start your day with mindful intention. Maybe you want to relieve some stress, relieve some anxiety. Maybe you want to fall asleep. That's honestly mine. I do have nights where I am unable to fall asleep right away. And so playing one of Katie's mindfulness meditations will absolutely get me there so much faster and better than a sleeping pill, right? Maybe you want to tune into the wisdom of your inner voice. No matter what your intention, each of Katie's guided meditations is created with love to help you shine throughout all the seasons of your life. You know, Katie has been on this show multiple times and she's a regular around here and I just absolutely adore her and I know you will too. And so falling asleep to her voice or waking up to her voice is kind of one of the things that helps get me through my day, helps me get centered. And not only does she have the Meditation for Women podcast, you guys, but let me just tell you, she's got a bunch. Um, her, her podcasts are so popular that she had to start a bunch of side podcasts that were, you know, specific to those topics that were getting really popular. So you can go to, you know, iTunes or Apple Podcasts or Overcast or Spotify, or our iHeartRadio, wherever you're listening to this podcast right now, and you can download the Meditation for Women podcast, or if you're looking for sleep, you can download Sleep Meditation for Women. Maybe you're looking to get going in the morning with a beautiful guided meditation. You can download the Morning, morning Meditation for Women podcast. She's also got sleep sounds, which are just beautiful sounds that you can fall asleep to. These are what I put on when I'm in a hotel room or somewhere unfamiliar where there's outdoor noises, especially if you're like in a city, like whenever I'm in New York, no matter how high you are on the high rise, you can hear the street noises from below. So you can put on some sleep, sleep uh, sounds into your headphones. She's also got water and nature sounds. And she's got ambient sounds and ASMR. Everything you need is at womensmeditationnetwork.com. Go there, get started, check everything out that Katie's doing. And of course, you can download all of the podcasts from the Women's Meditation Network on whatever podcast app you're listening to right now. Some of her most recent meditations that I've been listening to are the Ebb and Flow Meditation, A Morning Healing meditation. This one's for you, mama, in order of recently it being Mother's Day. Uh, the collective wisdom, what to do after the kids go to sleep, a Reiki meditation for mothers, how to surrender to the season, some light piano waves and binaural background beats, how to realign yourself, body healing sleep meditation, how to tap in to your potential, slow running water to help you relax, affirmations for self-love, and so many more. I don't know about you, but this, this is my jam. This is totally up my alley. And sometimes I'll drink wine while I listen to a meditation to fall asleep, and I'm okay with that. So wherever you are in your meditation journey, let Katie help you along the way. Again, everything is at womensmeditationnetwork.com. Check it out and let me know what you think. 
When Luca's mom was diagnosed with an autoimmune disease, she ran from doctor's office to doctor's office, getting more and more prescription medicine while her health just got worse, which is exactly what happened to my mom when she first had multiple sclerosis followed by cancer. Every pill introduced a new side effect and every side effect warranted a new pill. It was a vicious cycle with no healing in sight. In Luca's case, his mom found a different route. She found a doctor who specialized in root cause medicine. After 12 months, she completely reversed her autoimmune condition. And her son Luca began to think, why isn't all of medicine this personalized and data driven? And why doesn't everyone have access to this type of information? And that's when he created Index Health. Stories like these remind me of why I do this show, Food Heals Nation, and why I love Index Health, which you can learn more about at indexclinic.com slash foodheals. With Index Health, you get access to board-certified functional medicine trained doctors and functional trained nutritionists who use advanced lab tests to diagnose and treat chronic conditions. All treatment plans are 100% personalized, and doctor appointments are one hour long. They really take the time to deep dive into their patient's health. I only wish that something like Index Health was around when my mom was sick. To schedule your first appointment, visit indexclinic.com slash foodheals. Again, that's indexclinic.com slash foodheals. Food Heals Nation, did you know that Americans spend an average of 90% of their time indoors and take about 20,000 breaths per day? According to the EPA, indoor air is two to five times more polluted than outdoor air, and in some cases, this is scary, up to 100 times more polluted. The data shows that air pollution is responsible for nearly 7 million premature deaths globally. That's why it's so important to filter the air in our homes. You remember my story after discovering toxic mold in my home almost a year ago, I realized the importance of having multiple high quality air filters in my home to protect myself, to protect the air that I'm breathing and the air that my beagle Lily is breathing. Think about everyone in your household, your family members, your roommates, your kids, your cats, your dogs, your pets right? We have to be so conscious of the air that we're breathing inside, but that's why I'm obsessed with Air Doctor. You can visit airdoctorpro.com, use the code FOODHEALS, and you can get up to 39% off an air purifier. Air Doctor filters out 99.99% of dangerous contaminants and allergens like pollen and pet dander and dust mites and mold and even bacteria and viruses. So your lungs don't have to. It's so easy to set up. It's quiet and I can rest easy knowing I'm breathing cleaner air every day when I'm working from home. If you work from home like me, you've got to filter your air. So head on over to airdoctorpro.com, use the promo code FOODHEALS, and depending on the model you pick, you'll receive up to 39% off or up to $300 off. This is exclusive to Food Heals Nation listeners. You'll also receive a free three-year warranty on any unit, which is an additional $84 value. Check it out by going to A-I-R-D-O-C-T-O-R-P-R-O.com, airdoctorpro.com, and use promo code FOODHEALS. So taking that step back and how can you make breakfast fit into your life? You don't have to eat a different breakfast every day. You can eat the same thing. You can eat that oat bowl. You can eat avocado toast. You can eat overnight oats. You can eat, you know, have a smoothie, figure out how to make it fit. Maybe it's getting up 10 minutes early. Maybe it's prepping the meal the night before. So you just throw it in the blender and turn it on while you're packing everybody's lunches. Maybe it's, scheduling yourself a 30 minute break in the middle of the day so that you can go to your, you know, leave your home office and go downstairs. Or, you know, you take last night's leftovers to lunch so that you're eating a nourishing meal in the middle of the day so that you have the energy to show up for whatever's next in your day. But it's really taking that personal responsibility to do it. And so how do you fit that in? Well, first, I always tell people like meal planning is my number one tip. I sound like a broken record, but look at your schedule. Where are those small bits of gaps that you can, 
you know, go downstairs and grab an apple and cut it up or where you can, you know, throw food in the instant pot so that it's ready for dinner. Or you can chop up some veggies and throw them in the oven and then go back to work and turn, you know, have the timer set, obviously, so that you can kind of multitask so that you're not crunched at dinner time trying to feed everybody before they go off to their evening activities. Right. The other thing about really looking at those crunch points on your schedule and finding out where those gaps are is it also allows you to see if maybe you're doing too much, right? As overachievers, we want to do all the things. Is, I, don't, I don't know what it's like not to want that. So yes. <laughs> right. But what? Where is? where does health become a priority in that? And a lot of times it's just simply drawing a boundary and saying, I, my health is a priority and I am going to prioritize my health, like making it a personal responsibility. And sometimes it's a hard conversation to have with yourself because we do want it all, right? Like I was just telling you all the things that I do, like I love it. I don't mind having a coaching call at nine in the morning after coaching until 10 o'clock the night before. Like I love what I do. I love my clients. I love the people in my community. So I will show up for them. But how can I make sure that I'm also filling my cup? And that's taking time out that 15 minutes that it takes to make my food and then 15 minutes later to eat it, like fitting it in between and not turning to processed foods. And it might simply be having some fruit that's already prepackaged by Mother Nature to bring with you that you don't have to, you know, grab a snack bag or, you know, food from the vending machine. Right. I will say that my solution to this is always the smoothie because I can put all kinds of fruits, vegetables, and my all my fun, sexy supplement powders into it. And then I can sip it as I am doing whatever it is I need to do, whether it's running an errand that I have to run or whether it's recording a podcast or working with a client and I didn't prioritize or make time for that breakfast or whatever it might be. I can instantly have nutrition with that smoothie and that will sustain me until I can make the time for the meal. So I would say that's kind of my hack when it comes to this, because I am the person that you're describing, the busy, always um, idea laden professional that always has something going on. I don't get bored. I don't have idle time, right? So I have to create time when I have it for things that are valuable and important to me, such as eating right and eating well. Absolutely. And for busy people, this is where you are going to, you know, use the foods that are convenient. You're going to use that prepped broccoli. You're going to use those canned beans. You're going to use those quick cooking grains, but you're not hearing me say you're going to buy the frozen pizzas. You're not going to, you know, it's not those things. It's the whole food, the whole food convenience foods. You're going to be the one that uses the minced garlic. You're going to be the one that uses the onions and peppers that are already chopped in the grocery store. Really starting to look at ways that you can leverage those convenient foods that are still whole and as close to nature intended. Exactly. Yeah. Another thing I do, so I do the smoothies always, but usually more summer hot months. And I do the soups all the time too. So I will whip up a soup in a blender in like less than five minutes. And then I can either have it cold, which I love like a cold tomato gazpacho style soup, or I will just warm it up, you know, just for a couple of minutes. And that's a really quick, easy thing that you can do if you're a busy professional and you haven't made time. So I'm smoothies and soups, I think are my jam and my go-to when it comes to this. Those are both great ideas. Thank you. Um, so I would love to ask you this question that a lot of people, when they go plant-based or they choose to change their lifestyle in some way, such as start an exercise plan. They really want their partner to come along with the journey. And so I've asked people, how did you help your partner come on this journey with you? But in your case, it was your partner's encouragement to go on this journey. And now you are the epitome of it. You have built a business and a brand around it. So what I would love to know is how are some ways that he encouraged you lovingly? Because I know I've had experiences where um, my ex, I, I, I thought I was encouraging him lovingly to do all the healthy things. And now that we're broken up, I've been over to his house and he has the baking soda, soda tooth powder and he his, full, his fridge is full of vegan food and vegan cheese. And when we were together, he couldn't bring himself to do that. And so what are some ways that you have um, as a couple done this together and helped each other along the way? That's a really good question. And it's something that comes up a lot, especially with my coaching clients. My number one tip for helping other people get on board with this way of eating 
is to use familiar foods. You know, the the scariest part of going vegan or plant-based is really the FOMO, right? Fear of missing out on the things that you love, fear of giving right. up, fear of restriction. And it isn't until we see how it really fits into our life that oftentimes we can accept it. And so when we were making this transition, it was your favorite meals are tacos. Let's do tacos out of ingredients that you know. You know, mm-hmm. let's spaghetti is my, one of my other favorites. Let's eat spaghetti and we just won't eat it with meat sauce. Like very simple changes that allow your partner to see that it's not as scary. It's not as restrictive. The other thing that he let me do is he really gave me grace. I remember vividly sitting across the table with him and he's eating his veggie burger and I'm over there noshing on a hamburger. And in that whole time, I was thinking, I really probably should have tried the veggie burger. (laughs) And he didn't say anything. He wasn't judgy. He nothing. I just we just ate what we were eating. But I started to feel it. I started to realize it. And when when I was able to make that choice, it was more about, well, this is the burger that I've found to be the most enjoyable. Why don't we start there? So you are right. able to kind of re you know, introduce those, those meals. The other thing he didn't do was he didn't say, let's eat tofu and tempeh every day because those mm-hmm. are unfamiliar. Right. And so it's kind of the same when I cook for, when I cook for my family, who's not vegan, you know, we cook very familiar foods, potatoes, uh, beans and in, in barbecue sauce, familiar flavors. I'm not over there introducing them to, to foods that they wouldn't have eaten before. I'm really leaning into those foods that are familiar and comfortable for them so that it's not a huge change. Right. Well, and I love that because that makes it easy because we've all seen, we've all gotten looks when we eat something that is deemed strange or weird or they don't want to try it and that type of thing. And I'm not trying to create that weirdness with anyone that I know or love or care about. And then also the leading with non-judgment on your partner's part, because that is, it's like you lead with non-judgment and and you just show this is what I do, this is what I enjoy, and then other people who are ready for it come around based on your example, not based on you telling them you should be this way or my way is better than your way. Because if you come from it with that intention, you're never going to change anyone's hearts or minds, right? Absolutely. And there's enough preachy people out there that we don't need more, right? Like, Right, there, right. There's We're enough, not the preachy ones, right. people. <laughs> there's enough of that that stigma with, with veganism in general. So it's nice to have, you know, an inclusive and safe environment for people to explore this. Because if it had been really judgy and preachy, I may not be here. Yeah, exactly. And for for those on the other side, and because you and I have both been on the other side, I will say that at this point, I have, you know, like you said, people are like, they're scared. They have the FOMO, fear of missing out on their favorite foods. Let me tell you that once you're on the other side, I have absolutely zero cravings from anything other than what I eat. And I geek out and get so excited about my plant-based meals. When I see something on the menu, I know I can eat. Or when someone cooks something special for me, or I cook something special for myself or my friends, I am so in joy and excitement about that. And I never, ever feel like I'm missing out. So I just want to put that out there. Even I'll give you an example of something interesting that happened. Someone said to me, okay, so if it was your last meal on earth, what would you eat? And I was literally like, like you guys, this is it. Okay. Don't judge me. But it's literally like a bowl of rice with the, my favorite vegetables, um, and some teriyaki sauce. Like that is my favorite food. Like take me out to Japanese restaurant. I don't care what you eat, but give me the teriyaki or the hibachi. Okay. Like I want the hibachi or the teriyaki vegetables and rice. That is divine fine heaven on earth to me. And you know what he said? He goes, no, you would eat like a steak or something because it's your last meal. You don't need to be vegan anymore. And I go, yeah, you don't get it because I have absolutely no need, no craving, no want. I will never eat a steak for the rest of my life. I have absolutely no reason to. I don't want to. I'm not missing that steak or that shrimp or whatever it might be that people assume we're missing or assume they're going to miss. And I ate all the things before. So I just want to say that your taste buds change, your cravings change and your mentality shifts completely. So I totally agree with that. And I have to just piggyback a little bit on that because I, uh, I travel the country in an RV, right? We've talked about that. So I'm at campgrounds. What do you think they're cooking up on Saturday morning? I have no (laughs) craving for bacon and eggs. The smell is absolutely nauseating. And 
And I, you know, I grew up in a house that was meat and meat, meat and dairy based. Like that's what we ate growing up. Like I didn't go vegan because I didn't like animal products. I did it for my health and for the animals. And the more open you are to making this transition work, the easier it becomes. And then, like you said, like there are no cravings. There's no, I don't miss it because I've learned that it's this side just is, is just as satisfying, if not more satisfying. Like I love the foods I eat now. Oh, me too. I'm absolutely with you. And it is weird that foods that I'm the same exact way, the foods I grew up on, literally steak, eggs, bacon, eggs, all that stuff. That was the smell of my household and smells can really bring us back, but I have absolutely no craving or nostalgia. When I smell those smells, my body literally rejects those smells because I think I'm conditioned to know those things aren't good for my body. Those things aren't things that I want to partake in because I don't want to harm an animal. And so therefore my, my body has changed the way that it receives the smells in terms of like, instead of giving me a nostalgia, it gives me an, Oh no, thank you. Not at all. Not interested. Definitely. I definitely think it's almost like that. That's not food to me anymore. It's not exactly. It's not even something I would consider. That's really interesting. That's a good point. And I think another thing is once you have more energy, once you lose weight, those foods become the same because you go, those are the cause of me feeling like crap. I, these are the cause over here. I'm pointing in the other direction. You can't see me, but you know, I'm pointing at my tomatoes and broccoli and cauliflower and potatoes that make me energize and make me feel good. So my body reacts differently to the taste, to the look, to the smell. And so I'm I'm automatically, my body has retrained itself to crave healthier foods. And the better I make them taste uh, by cooking them or having someone amazing cook for me or trying out a plant-based restaurant, which are usually pretty good these days, like Mm -hmm. very, very high quality, um, high-end chefs working at most of these places that I've been to through uh, across the country like you um, and in multiple countries abroad as well. Uh, the point is that my body does not even flinch at the thought of a non plant-based food and it just changes. Everything changes. Definitely. Yeah. All right. Well, I know that you have lots of ways to work with you and follow you, but first, can you tell us about your free gift for Food Heals Nation? Absolutely. I'm so excited about this because as I've told you all, meal planning is my number one tip for success. So I've put together a meal plan of recipes the whole family will love. It is over five recipes with the recipe, with a grocery list and how to fit it in even in your busy schedule. So you can find that at veginspired.com slash podcast. I'd love for you to connect with me also on Instagram, but the, I don't know. I get excited. I get all excited. The meal plan is really, really helpful to kind of allow you to try this out, allow you to look at ways that you can fit more plant-based recipes in, maybe, you know, share them with family, share them with friends using familiar foods and, and just living it up for a week on, on my meal plan. Yeah. I mean, everything sounds delicious. You've got your Instagram that I already follow and I just pulled it up and your most recent picture is your before and after as of this recording, it may change by the time this goes live, but you can see your weight loss journey. And then you've got beautiful recipes here and oh my gosh, rainbow vegetables, sashimi bowl just looks divine. Heaven on earth to me. You've got the recipe there. You've got um, some other amazing foods here. Like I just Everyone go dive in if you need plant-based inspiration, a spinach artichoke dip. Uh, There's just so much here that looks, uh, I mean, my mouth is watering. I'm so hungry right now. I can't even. So that's that veg inspired. And of course, get the free, the freebie because then you can start making this food for yourself if you're not already. Or if you are already, I'm like, I'm still going to go download it because I know your recipes are different than my recipes and the, you know, ones that I've either created or, or make from other people that I follow. So. So exciting. Absolutely. Yeah, definitely. And they're, they're fun and they're flavorful and what better than getting somebody else to do your meal plan for you. Right. Yeah. It just makes everything easy, fun, affordable. And, um, you have travel tips too. So this is all, I mean, this is like, you're like another version of me. Cause I'm like, okay, I travel. Uh, I, um, am a busy working entrepreneur. I am vegan and yeah, we're all the things together and I, I still want to make it affordable. I don't want to make it elitist. I don't want to only shop at um, the expensive organic food stores. I want to find my organic food from Walmart and Costco and save a buck, you know, so I'm all about it. Exactly. Exactly. I love it. 
Oh my gosh. Okay. So veginspired.com. Um, tell us about last thing you have your uh, group coaching. Tell us about that. Yes. So the Eat More Plants Academy is actually a 12 month transformational coaching program. So it takes you from where you are to eating plant based effortlessly and intuitively. It's, it really takes the guesswork out, but it, it's founded on four principles or four pillars habits, systems, the foods and recipes, and then the mindset or the thinking that it takes to make this shift a lasting transformation because there's nothing worse than yo-yoing. And so the Academy really helps you go from starting and stopping, restarting again on Monday to making it last and moving forward with intention and mindful and intuitive lifestyle. Well, I think that's a great program. And I just want to say that like, we're on it, we're on this as a journey because it's not like you get to the destination and everything is perfect and easy. It's a journey and it just keeps getting better and better. Even if you fall back on a habit here and there, I've certainly got my habits. I've got my wine, I've got um, my vegan desserts, that type of thing, but I'm still always on the upward trend of healthier and healthier and discovering new ways to keep my body healthy, whether it's holistic health or medicine or um, uh, new plant-based foods that I haven't tried or new supplements, whether it's like, oh, I'm not getting enough sleep or a new exercise routine when I need to switch it up. I'm just constantly moving up. Even if I miss a couple of workouts, I know I can get back on and get better and better. And so it is a journey and no one's perfect. You're not going to be perfect overnight, but if you take these steps one day at a time, it does get easier and easier. You will feel better and better and you won't go back to the way things were. Absolutely. What a, what a, way to encapsulate this whole conversation. I just love it. (laughs) Well, thank you, Kathy. Thank you so much for being here. I will see you on the gram, girl. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. Bye, everybody. Bye. These statements have not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration. This podcast is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. Side effects of this podcast may include increased health and vitality, thoughts of living longer, developing a more positive outlook on life. In rare cases, people have experienced a strong desire to put down the Ben and Jerry's, get off the couch, and take a walk outside. If you experience any of these symptoms, tell your Facebook friends immediately.